Hello, welcome back to another 3D Hangout. My name is Noah Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit. And joining me every week is my brother Pedro. Good morning, everybody. I'm Pedro's Creative Tech here at Adafruit. And every week we're here to share three printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make fluttering wings. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. We're hanging out in the Discord chat room. If anyone would like to join us uh, during the live show, you can do so by joining the Discord server. The invite link to that is discord.gg slash Adafruit. It's also up here in our little header area, the little purple bar. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We got a lot of fun stuff to show and, and talk about, so we can't wait to get started. <laughs> ahead, we are not just in the Discord, we're hanging out in the Twitch, in the YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Periscope, in any other chat room, we're we're streaming through yeah. StreamYard, not StreamYard. Restream, Restream. IO. <laughs> Lots of streams going on. But Even shout outs to everybody mm -hmm. hanging out in all of the <laughs> chat rooms. Starting off with Mr. Certainly Bruce. Hello. We got Rolls on the YouTube chat. M Albert. We have on the U uh, Facebook mm -hmm. and Twitch as well. Good morning, everybody, for hanging out. Beautiful morning here in Central Florida. Let's go ahead and jump into the weekly housekeeping. Yeah, sure. Well, 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 we started off with the Discord server, so that's where we're hanging out. But also, you can check out adafruit.com slash free and find out all the freebies that are going on. This is an ongoing kind of deal. So let's scroll on over. So if you head on over to adafruit.com slash free, you can see all the different tiers. For orders that are a dollar more, we're still giving away the black surgical mask for the 100 days of masking. There are still a couple days left. Uh, I'm not sure how many days are left, but there's, there's, it's still going on. Uh, for orders that are $99 more, you get the free mask plus a Adafruit Perma Proto. that's the half size breadboard. For orders that are 140 or more, you get the Perma Proto, the free black surgical mask, and a free randomly chosen STEMI QT board. And there's new ones like every week. So you get to, um, exp you know, you get a randomly chosen one. If you have an account, we make sure that you're not getting the same one. If you don't have an account, you'll just get one randomly. For, for orders that are $200 or more, you get the free STEM IQT board, the Perma Proto board, the black surgical mask, and free ground shipping for continental US only. And for orders that are $299 or more, you get the continental free shipping from UPS, you get the the STEM QT board, the half size from a proto, and the black surgical mask. You can get as many as you want. You can check out the site again. That's adafruit.com slash free to get, uh, to get info on all the stuff. All right. So we kick off the shows of the week with from the desk of Lady Ada. She does the great search uh, with DigiKey every Sunday at uh, ha random hacker hours. And this week it was on Sunday at around 9 to 10 p.m. And we had some good times. And then on Mondays, uh, normally we have the Circuit Python meetings on Mondays that happen at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, live in the Discord chat room. So if you want to join in live, you can uh, join in on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time and listen in on the, the, the core devs in the community. All right, and then on Tuesdays, we got JP's Pick of the Week. It happened every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Today's Wednesday, we got a slew of shows with 3D Hangouts, and then later, we have uh, Show and Tell at 7.30, and then at 8 p.m., Ask an Engineer. And then tomorrow, <laughs> it's John Park's workshop at 4 p.m., and then Scott's on Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific Time. If you are interested in newsletters, once a week, Adafruit releases a newsletter that's focused on the new products that were added to the shop. So you can subscribe to that by heading over to adafruit.com slash newsletter. For a daily digest of news and stories and beyond, you can go to adafruitdaily.com and check out all the different categories that you can subscribe to. It's a separate uh, kind of account, so it's not tied to your Adafruit account. So we make sure we don't spam anybody that way. Um, so if you'd like to subscribe, you got to opt into it yourself. There's lots of categories like 3D printing, biohacking, um, maker business, and of course, Python on hardware. I think the latest edition was IoT Monthly by Brent Rubel, who heads um, Adafruit.io. 
which we have to give a shout out to the new dev blog videos that he's been putting out. You can find a blog post yes. to those as they're released on blog.afruit.com for all of the latest updates on that. Yeah, maybe we'll need a new banner, an IOT banner. All right, we're gonna jump back into Discord and say hello, everybody. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Good morning, everybody. We got Bradley joining in saying, hope all is well. Yeah. Likewise, I hope everybody's doing well. Okay, are we ready to jump into this week's project? Let's go ahead and talk about some fluttering fairy wings or dragon wings or... Whatever wings. Cecilia wings? Any type of wing will work with this project. Yeah, so this week we're releasing, uh, a little bit later I think, we're gonna have the learn guide for the animatronic cosplay wings uh, released sometime this week. Um, it's currently in review, so uh, we'll get that out as soon as we can. And same thing with the video and stuff. Um, so I guess I'll start off with a huge shout out to Erin St. Blaine. This was uh, spearheaded by her. She really wanted a pair of fluttering fairy wings. And um, we collaborated on, on that, on the projects. Uh, we did the 3D printing um, and she did the code and the construction of the fairy wings, which we uh, will talk about. So really cool, Lamar um, has actually done a fairy wing type guide several years ago. Uh, so a bit of a history. Um, this is Lady Ada. She's linked her old blog, LadyAda.net. This is before Adafruit, before the learning system. This is how she, this is her old blog that's still a lot, yeah, it's probably, it's, I'm not sure how old it is, but it's probably, uh, so this is cool. It's got EL wire um, in, the, in this kind of butterfly wing format. It looks like it, there's a, you can she walks through the construction of it. This is the first time I'm seeing it, folks. That's why I'm a little out of words because, like, whoa, this is awesome to see um, something a blast from the past. And I actually haven't seen wings that look this good with this edge lit effect. Uh, so shout out to Lamar for like pulling this up. She never mentioned it. That's why I'm like super surprised about it. Um, but hey, this is in, in good Lamar fashion. This shows that she's been documenting for decades, even if it's just like photos. Like this is very, very applicable to today. Like you could still make these from today. So shout out to Lamar for, uh, for throwing that in there. Um, yeah, there's also um, the fairwing construction technique was inspired by the fancy fairwings. There's a YouTube link if you want a more thorough um, tutorial on like constructing uh, with this technique that we'll show in a little bit here. We have a page as well. Um, so yeah, this is the overview page and it just kind of has some, some parts lists here of all the things that we need. Here's Erin, she did a really cool photo shoot. She went with the aviator uh, kind of steampunk aesthetic, which works really well uh, with, with, the whole, with the whole look. Um, so for the parts, of course, feather, feather wings. This is the most feather project ever, folks. You have two wings, you use two feathers, and you have a doubler feather wing. Come on guys, I want, some I want some feather puns. So if you guys come up with some cool feather puns, I have, I just, I'm just now realizing that this is a feather wing <laughs> project. Feather wings for some feathered wings? Yeah, and I just jumped into Discord to see if, like, who's got the first? All right, so back over to the learn system. We're using the Feather M4 Express because of its speed. It's got CircuitPython. This is a CircuitPython project. So when you have your Feather, you plug it into any computer that has a USB drive, and there you have your libraries and your code, and image assets if you had that, or sound effects if you had them. And this is super expandable with the Feather uh, and the Feather Wing. So if you wanted to add accelerometer control or, like I said, sound effects, because it's on the Feather platform, boy, is it going to be easy to add that in. Uh, and the other hero is the Feather Wing, the Servo Feather Wing. This thing can control up to eight independent servos, which is a lot of legs or wings. Um, so if you wanted to add ears, uh, a tail, and eyes, you could totally uh, use the servo feather wing to control up to eight servos, which is pretty cool. The uh, feather doubler, <laughs> the feather wing doubler, is a little um, breakout that lets you fit two feathers uh, side by side, so it keeps them, you could stack them, but because of our wing kind of format, we want to have them laid out. So if you wanted to add a tripler feather wing, you could do that and add three feathers. So if you want to add like a prop maker feather wing, or a data logger or something else with a screen or something, you could do that as well. So um, this is super expandable and customizable. So to power all of those servos and to power the microcontroller, the feather, 
we're using the Power Boost 1000 C. This is uh, going to give you one amp, five volts out. It gives you plenty of voltage uh, pins to work with, and um, it's it takes this makes it so that you can use one battery to power all the servos and the feather. Normally, you're supposed to have a separate power supply for just controlling the motors, the servos. But the power boost gives you enough power to power your wings and, um, and the feather. <laughs> so for the micro servos, we have these high powered, high torque metal gear servos. The kind of tip, the standard servo, not standard, but some of the other servos that we've used, uh, they use plastic um, gears. This one is rated for a high power and high torque, so they have metal gears and they're really robust for these type of projects that are going to have a little bit of weight to them. Uh, so this is the first time kind of working with these servos and uh, we'll, we'll kind of talk about some of the things uh, with it. For the battery, I'm using the, um, the 2200 milliamp LiPo batteries, these kind of lipstick style batteries. Um, I like these, they're kind of rigid. Rigid. rigid, so if I drop it, it's not going to blow up like those soft pouches. Uh, so that's why we went with this battery. I also recommend this battery for like your props. So like the lightsaber kit uses it as well. So I really like this battery. And um, yeah, you plug that straight into the power boost and you get five volts, which is awesome. Um, we got some other odd ends and bits like a potentiometer with a built-in on-off switch that lets you control the speed and turn on and off the power boost, which powers the whole circuit. Um, there's a 10K resistor. Um, we'll talk about that in the circuit diagram. Um, some feathers, ribbon cables, JST connectors, the whole kind of build of materials is all here. There are some uh, screws and bits like radial ball bearings, which we do have in the shop, but there's also some other things like a stick vise, uh, helping hands. These are all tools and stuff that Lamar has you know, accumulated over in the shop over the years because those are things that uh, we think will help folks. If you're new to electronics, it's always good to kind of um, link to to the tools that make it a little bit easier. And then here's a list of all the hardware. So you're going to need some screws and I have them all listed here and categorized per kind of module. So like the servo mounts, here's the set of screws for just the servo mounts, the battery holder, the back plate, of course the wing holder. So lots of M3 and M25 screws. Cool. So that is the overview page. Wonderful. Next up, let's talk about the circuit diagram. So circuit diagrams are put together with uh, open source software called Fritzing. And it's a really good piece of uh, software that lets you create these graphical um, wire diagrams, which you could also go down and make PCBs. And it's got a lot of fun stuff. So it's open source. It's free to download. Uh, I think there's a donation now, too, which is like $8 or so. Um, but hey, Adafruit has a parts library. So that's how we put this together. Lots of our uh, products are um, made as, as a Fritzing part. Uh, so that helps folks uh, recreate uh, wiring diagrams and stuff. Um, but yeah, so if you take a look at the power boost, um, the, the power boost, when you want to um, add a switch, an on-off switch to your power boost, normally the enable uh, pin is like on by default. So when you try to use a switch, um, when you turn the switch on, it turns the power boost off. So Lamar uh, devised a really clever way on uh, kind of reversing that. So what's going on here is we have a 10K resistor on the enable and ground pin, and then the on off switch is tied to the VS pin and the enable pin. So this makes it so that when you turn, so this makes it so that the power boost is off by default. So that means when you turn it on with the switch, it turns the circuit on. Never quite done that before in a project. So this is really cool to, uh, to see that because I've always had that kind of issue where if you've tried to use the on off switch with the power boost, uh, you'll notice that it's kind of reversed, right? And that's by design. And hey, here's a clever way on how to reverse that. So shout out to Lamar for helping us with that one because we were originally going to do two switches. You know, one switch to turn off the feather and another switch to turn the power boost on. Uh, but this, this is a really nice, elegant solution. Cool. So um, for accessibility purposes, the wiring diagram is all broken out in text. Um, so that's, that's really nice. Uh, you can print this out as a PDF or just reference the words if you'd like as well. It's very cool. So that's the circuit diagram. Um, yeah, I just really wanted to focus on the power boost, like powering it, because this is the first time I've done that. We're going to definitely use this, this technique in uh, going forward. Yes. Perfect. Speaking of which, I'd like to upgrade our circuit Python camera slider with this circuit, because right now I got two batteries. Yeah. I have this giant 
12 volt pack and then like a little three volt battery just to power the the uh, power boost so if you are if you have a similar circuit uh, check out the power boost for uh, for powering the whole thing so it's, it's a nice solution all right the next pages walks you through um, installing circuit python onto your feather m4 express these are mirrored pages we, we, we like to have consistency across all the guides so that when we update one um, circuit python page they kind of update across all of them um, so this one has screenshots, gives you links, and a nice thorough breakdown on how to get into the bootloader and to how to install CircuitPython. It's as easy as dragging and dropping a UF2 file into the USB drive because that's the way the bootloader works, which is pretty cool. So check that out. That's going to hopefully be helpful for folks that haven't uh, experimented with CircuitPython yet. The code is on GitHub, and here's the page. You're going to need a couple libraries, uh, the bus device, the, um, the servo kit, library and um, basically all of these uh, these these libraries here so the bus device motor the PCA 9685 that specific driver to the servo uh, feather wing the Adafruit register for doing I squared C and then the the servo kit library so those are easy to pull out of the bundle the library bundle is a download of the zip file that you can grab from this link here <clears throat> and then you just kind of pick out those libraries and drop them into your lib folder in your circuit python drive on your feather and then the screenshot just gives you a visual of uh of what it looks like so the code is on github this view right here is like in the back end so in the once it's public you'll actually see the code embedded into this page and you can uh, download it or fork it or do a pull request for it if you'd like to upgrade to it or something and then um so, that, so that'll be there once it's public. Right now I'm in the back end. And calibrating your wings, this walks you through um, kind of making sure that your servos are where you want them to be. Uh, so if you're setting up a different set of wings or a different appendage, uh, you're going to want to walk through this and, and kind of walk through calibrating your wings because the servos, um, they have a minimum and maximum servo uh, like range of degrees. So you'll want to play with that. And this one walks you through uh, all the bits that, 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 that you can use. All right, cool. All right, next page is 3D printing. So I have a, um, all the STL files can be downloaded. They're, they're kind of oriented to print as is. And what's really cool is they don't require any support material. So you can print a whole, p a whole kit on, a, on your bed, um, or you can print them out individually, or you can send the files out to be printed by a, uh, a friend or a service. So, uh, so it's all fair game. And if you have, if you'd like to make modifications to the model, um, the source file is in is in step format, so that'll work across all of the the, the CAD packages. Um, so, like SolidWorks or Fusion 360, you can use the step file for any of those. All right, and then here's a list of all the parts. There's so not too many of them, but uh, there they are. A uh, quick look at the slice settings. Um, this is how I kind of oriented them. So, if you want to print your whole kit. You can reference this image to kind of orient your parts. Yeah, none of them require supports, which is great. The back plate requires a, a, a minimum bed volume of 165 by 135. Um, I thought I'd, I'd, people have asked me before, like, uh, can I print this? And I, I, it's always good to have, like, here's the minimum for the biggest part. Um, there you go. Um, and then I have some CAD explosions that uh, are our visual way to see how all the screws and bits are fitted. They're not going to play in our back end because that's the way GIFs are, are handled, but um, they look really cool. <laughs> and uh, I think they're a good visual way to see how all the screws are fitted. Um, I think I could just hit preview. I was going to say, just go in the preview. Yeah. <clears throat> so I've been posting all the code for this and even a sneak peek at the video because it is unlisted, yeah. so you can check that out. Well, be sure to check it out when the guide's live, because I have the autoplay disabled for Safari to help minimize, mm -hmm. you know, lag, because I sure have a lot of it here on my computer. Um, so I can't run those, those cat animations, but hey, I know they're there. <laughs> Just know that they're there, and they're a visual way to kind of see how the assembly is. Yeah, all right. The next set of pages is really thorough. It really breaks down installing every screw 
and um, that's going to be really great for folks that need that visual um, step by step on uh, like installing every screw and it really is a chron like you have to do it in this order so I made sure uh, that the order is chronological and uh, digestible because I could have had one page that's just like infinite but I figured let's break it up into the modules so we have the servo assembly that just walks through installing the servo into their servo mounts um, they are secured with these two M25 by 8 millimeter screws ball bearings are just press fitted into the holder you want to do that first sorry I'm at a I'm out of order here, but it's uh, that simple. They get uh, fastened into these uh, these little brackets here, and then um, I'm using a lot of lock nuts that are press fitted into the servo arm, so that uh, they have that nylon um, insert, so they, they have a really good grip into them, and they're not going to unfasten uh, during uh, during the use during movement. Um, so yeah, I walk through all of that. Um, and then I, uh, so the servo horns that are stock with the servos, um, I really recommend if you're ever doing a, uh, some sort of attachment for your servo, I really recommend like modeling around the servo horn. Um, I've tried to 3D print servo horns before. You can do it, it works, but I think for the best, like uh, stability wise and like the most best tolerances, you're gonna wanna, uh, at least I recommend sticking with the stock uh, servo horn and sticking with that because it has the splines that are really um, press fitted into the shaft of the of the servo and you're not going to get that grinding and stuff uh, and I think PLA is, is maybe not the strongest material and even resin and let's say sintered nylon might not be as strong as as this stuff here as the stock servo um, yeah and it comes with a ton of uh, little mounting holes and stuff and you can you can uh, use the built-in screws to attach the uh, the servo horn into the servo arm. It has a a cavity designed to fit um, the servo horn, so you just press fit it in there and then attach that screw on the top, and then it's super secure that way. All right, so the next pieces are like um, installing a little pin for the bearing so that that can uh, be attached to the servo arm. Yeah. And then this one, you definitely want to calibrate it. So this is where like, you want to plug in your servos and test out where the rotation is, like where the degrees of the rotation are. And you can do that by using like a little flag. I just fashioned one out of uh, painter's tape. So that way you can see like, all right, if I mount my, my servo arm here in this position, this is how much range I get. So definitely want to do that um, before you, s you start fitting your wings. So I made sure to, to, uh, to have this here for the hardware sake. And then in the code, it even shows you, hey, you want to do that there too, calibrating it. I think that's a really important thing there. Um, yeah, and then once you have that position figured out, then you can install the servo horn uh, onto, the, onto the servo and then fasten a screw with that pin so it's counterbalanced with the, with the, with the ball bearing. Yeah, so that's how you set up your, uh, your servos. The next one talks about the wing panels. So the wing panels is um, the process of using uh, a vinyl cutter and a laminating uh, machine and a couple of different layers of iridescence to create a fairy style wing. So if you're really into the fairy wings and, and, you, and you want uh, to recreate the fairy wings, Aaron has SVG files that can be laser cut, they can be vinyl cut, water jet and of course 3d printed if you have a big 3d printer um, these are designed to fit on a i suppose a 12 by 12 is it is it 12 by 24 inch um the longer style mats so yeah 12 by 24 inch um a little long sticky ones. mat uh, for a cre-cut machine of course you could use another um, vinyl cutting machine uh, this is just the one that aaron used and it looks like she's using the purple one, which I think is for fabric, which gives it like a light stick. So it should be pretty easy to remove those once it is cut off. I think I used like the blue one, but any of those should work as long as the adhesion is, uh, or she shows there having the tape around them. So it is nice and steady as the blade cuts around. And she's using a thicker material, uh, 
what is it? I, Bristol board, I think it was. You get these at, uh, I think I picked it up at um, Joann's uh, Fabric or Michael's, I believe, has a couple of different sizes as well. And you're going to need the blade for the uh, Cricut. Uh, so she's using the Cricut Maker and that has the ability to have these, um, these much longer uh, blades, like knife blades that'll be able to cut through that thicker material. Yeah, let's step back a bit. Um, there's a list of, of materials here that I'm seeing. So there it is, yeah, Bristol poster board. board, chipboard, or Bristol board. So you could experiment with different uh, thick materials. Chipboard is something we've used a lot of. Mm -hmm. 16 gauge wire for support, that's another a uh, set of materials that I didn't think should about. be in the jewelry section of your craft store. All right. Iridescent silophane or gift wrapped. This um, one specifically, uh, I don't think she linked it there, but we got it from a company called Nashville Wraps, and they have the iridescent um, uh, like wrap that we're using on that, which Excellent. we can actually show right here on the overhead. Very beautiful iridescent type color, which I've only found them to carry. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So this was kind of hard to find. One of the only um, tougher to source materials and they ship in about like a week or so. And it comes in a nice big roll so you can have a lot of uh, practice with these or use them for uh, what they're uh, intended for, wrapping gifts and things like that. <laughs> nice is what these are. Yeah, definitely but, a great way to make this uh, membrane for mm -hmm. these fairy wings. Um, but yeah, back over to the guide, you can see that uh, we got a whole list there of the stuff. We've got some links here to the tools, the sewing needles, straps some spray well. paint. You can spray paint your wings, uh, and then we're down to the zip file of the of the SVGs. So mm -hmm. these uh, these wings are um, yeah. So actually, vectored. forgot that I used the glitter uh, rose gold spray paint on here. You can kind of tell the nice little glittery on there to make it the fairy look. And then I'm using the iron, uh, the Cree cut iron to just uh, iron this together to have make a sandwich out of the Bristol board that is in the middle here. And then inside of the SVG files, you'll find the spacing for the mounting holes. You could, of course, just you know directly yeah. cut those. Yeah, we'll show you in a second here on how you can fashion, how you would attach them to mm -hmm. the servo. So let's kind of wrap up the learn guide and, and uh, get through it. So yep, we got the SVG files and this will just walk you um, through cutting it and setting it up in the software for the Krika. So you can use that. And then um, this walks you through the construction. So once your, your wing has been cut out of your thick material, uh, then you transfer it onto uh, this, this transfer paper. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I didn't do any of these steps. Yeah. Um, hey, so you can construct the wings however you'd like. This is yeah, just showing how Aaron did it. Yeah. yeah. So different techniques. It's always cool. Pedro yeah, you can use a different. laminator or you can use like a, I'm going to guess, a, a iron like for your clothes might work. But yeah. I use like the Cree Cut uh, the press. Easy press. Yeah. Easy so it's just press. a giant <laughs> flat surface um, iron for, for clothes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then here's some uh, the wiring supports. So setting that up. Oh, and you then, actually uh, need to do this probably first. The wire. Okay. Okay, so that's a little lower, out of order, but yeah, uh, definitely do that yeah, first and then do the iron. Oh, yeah, first. you see the iron, the wire oh, there is, it is already okay. there. Okay. Yeah, it's a little out of order. Huh. Okay. We can rearrange it and stuff. This is mm -hmm. why the guy doesn't like <laughs> uh, So, yes, there's some fishing line that you can use to attach it. And, uh, and then attaching it to the black plate once it's all set up, which uh, I guess I'll do a demo of. And then you can decorate um, the whole backpack. You can adorn other things in it to kind of cover up the, uh, the 3D printed parts so that it looks like, um, you know, it, it, so it looks more, uh, less mechatronic, more however you like. <laughs> yeah, so she went with the steampunk look. Yeah. Uh, we kind of like the open look. It looks a little bit more gothy, electronic, Tron gothy. I don't know what the... Uh, I mean, yeah, I just, those I just have it bare because like, I'm not going to uh, dress it up. <laughs> like, I'm going to leave it so yeah. it doesn't demystify it. Because once you, dr you dress it up, you, you can't tell how it kind of works. So uh, that's kind of why I left it bare bones like that. But uh, we're, we're almost through. So that's the construction of the wings. This particularly the fairy wings, right? And then uh, everything else um, after that is still like, all right, here's setting up the feathers. So just 
It's setting up the low profile headers onto the doubler feather wing. The next page shows like installing the headers and the little connector base. You got a screw block terminal and a three by three header pin set so that it's easy to connect uh, servos right on top. Instead of having to wire it in, you can disconnect them easily as well. Feather headers are, are setting it up um, with your feather headers. They come with the feathers. <laughs> Wiring up the pot switch. Uh, so the pot switch, it has a switch built into the pin potentiometer so you can turn off and on the power boost and then the potentiometer is used for adjusting the speed. I figured to have these set up to a set of JST cables so that it's easy to disconnect them. I feel that that's a, a good thing to have because if you just have the super long wire and it connects to your circuit and then maybe your wire is not long enough it, it can be a little bit of a back and forth so that's why I really recommend using JST connectors. When it comes to the power boost, um, we got that 10K resistor that gets soldered into the ground pin and the enable pin. That'll reverse kind of the polarity, or at least the, the way the enable is on by default. It'll make it so that it's off by default. And then you can uh, wire in uh, your, your two wires from your switch to the VS pin and the enable pin. You're gonna have to share the enable pin because it's also uh, being shared with that resistor. But that's, uh, that's how you set it up there. You can see here I'm using those, uh, that JST um, cable there. Hmm. Okay. And then setting up the doubler, like wiring that up. I really like using the Featherwing doubler, tripler, any of the Featherwing add-on boards because they give you extra pins. In this case, I'm actually soldering um, the voltage and ground uh, into the voltage and ground pins on the, uh, on the doubler, so that way I'm not soldering directly to the feather. So that means the feather can just come out and all of the wiring is, fed, is fitted on the doubler and not the feather. So that's really uh, smart. And then uh, you're using these screw block terminals um, um, for fitting in those wires from the power boost, the voltage and ground from the power boost. So that's how the servo is getting power from the five volt pin and the ground pin from the power boost. Yeah, so uh, all the wire connections are fitting into the, uh, into the doubler even the potentiometer. So the potentiometer has three wires, power, uh, I mean voltage and ground, and then a signal using the A0 pin, but you can switch it up if you'd like. And then I'm using the three pin JST connector so you can disconnect the potentiometer. All right, so the battery connects directly into the power boost. It has a little JST port that's fitted there. And then, uh, then you can use the, the on off switch to turn it on and off. And there you go. And that is most of the, the wiring really. Battery holder gets installed with a couple of uh, lock nuts and it, it gets fitted onto that back plate. And then the back plate, we're going to attach the two servo um, mounts uh, to the back plate. They have these holes. You can use uh, long screws and some hex nuts to secure them in place. You can reference the image for the, you know, the placement of how they are mirrored. And then the PCB has some standoffs that you'll want to use. You can play around with different lengths of standoffs. If you want a lower profile or thicker profile, you can change up the length of the, uh, you know, of the standoffs. We've got a nice M25 standoff kit as well that I recommend, and I have linked. Um, and then securing the PCB mount, uh, the, the power boost to the PCB mount with some screws. That's actually underneath the, um, I positioned, I mounted the power boost under the doubler feather wing so that everything is like kind of nicely kind of stacked on top. So I think that's a, a nice way to keep it not hidden, but like, you know, underneath, but still accessible. You can still, of course, recharge the battery with that USB port. That's what the C is in the Power Boost 1000C. That means you can charge your battery. All right, so fitting that over, um, a couple steps here because of the way the, um, because of the way the PCB mount is, you kind of have to install a screw that goes through the back plate, through the PCB mount, and then you can twist on the standoffs over the, uh, the thread of the screw. So once it's installed, then you can install the battery, install your feathers, um, connect the, the servos on top. It's easy to connect them, they just plug in. The pins are listed on the servo feather wing PCB, so you'll know exactly you know, the right way to plug it in because the, the pins are labeled, which is great. And then uh, we got the battery, it slides into that battery clip. It's got a nice uh, fit on there. And then uh, connect the switch, super easy, because you just plug in the JST connectors and, and there you go. That's, that's, uh, that's kind of the, the build in a nutshell. 
Um, you know, at this point, I don't have my wings, <laughs> so you want to put your wings at that point. Um, and then there's a page here on wearing them. Just some things like um, some extra bits, like you can mount it to like a wristband or integrate it into your garment or something. So that's what Erin did here with her her pot switch. Uh, she integrated into like this this uh, this bracelet. Yeah, pretty cool. And there's some more bits here on like wearing them and maintaining them, feeding them, making sure they're, uh, they're well fed. <laughs> How to walk through a door frame with them. How to sit down with them. Yeah, all the, all the usage bits, right? Cool, so let me show you how quick it is to swap out these wings, right? So I just took them off the model here and we're gonna get them down here. So I have these screws here and I, I would really like wing nuts because come on, right? Wing nuts would really work well here. I'm just saying, okay? So you got these two screws. They're rather lengthy. They're about 15 millimeters long. And they are fitted so that they um, have a, they just fit in. There's no threading here. You, what you want is your wing nut to, uh, to have a nice nylon insert so that it has a real lock connection. But once those two screws are out, this slides out. So you wanna be aware of the thickness here. It's about four millimeters thick. Uh, but you could you could probably fit five millimeters in, into here. Um, so this is the 3D printed wing. It's more of a more of a bird wing. Um, but you see here, I added a little bit of thickness here, um, so that it would uh, have a little bit more fitting in there. Um, but yeah. So if you want to add the fairy wing, where did you? There he is. <clears throat> so let's say um, you didn't have holes. Well, all you would have to do is fit this in here. And then Smart. you can mark it or use a drill to just drill right here. And uh, you do have a metal wire or no? Your metal wire is like right here, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. Peter did use the metal gauge wire and um, we were able to, to poke these holes out. And you can see here, I actually updated the hole. <laughs> so I just <laughs> made a new one there, super easy to do so. Um, so you fit it in there like that, line up your holes and then um, get it going, right? You fit your screw in there. Just punch it through, goes through the other side, and then you got your your uh, wing nuts that you can secure here. If you had a you know something different, maybe fabric, you could try sewing it uh, to these wing holders. Um, but that's how simple it is to swap out the wing. I do have a set of dragon wings that I'd like to share. Look at that one. One wing is a, a butterfly, and the other one is a Lucifer wings. <laughs> what a great mix. So that's how you can do that. Um, talk about the back plate real quick. Uh, the back plate, uh, can, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff you could do to improve it, to, um, to make it more wearable. Right now it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty bare bones. I don't have any padding or anything like that. So this could easily be reworked um, as a textile with layered um, padding so that when you're wearing it, uh, it feels good. But notice that the screw heads are right here. If these were on the opposite, you'd have the thread of the screw, and this would be touching your back. So you want to make sure that your 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 head and your screws are on, are all here, because this is what's going to touch your back, right? And then of course, like I said, you might want to add some padding. <laughs> I've only worn them for a little bit, so I don't know uh, if they if they hurt or whatever. Uh, but another cool thing is that these uh, these servo uh, holders are slotted, so that means it's you got a lot of uh, options for mounting. It's not specific, um, you know, mounting. So if you wanted to sew this to a garment, those uh, that's easy to do so. Um, if I had a screwdriver, I would uh, probably take this off and show you just the the mount itself. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna skip that because uh, the camera's kind of in the way. And yeah, I don't have a screwdriver right now, <laughs> but it'd be cool to take it apart. Um, yeah, so we got these straps here that are built into the back plate. So you can use these little loops here to install your elastic strap. And then the wiring can be, you know, reworked. It can be, uh, if you wanted a lower profile, you see how these stick out? If you wanted a more permanent solution, then you would wire these directly into the pins and maybe even skip the headers because they're, they're, they're a bit lengthy. So if you really wanted to be small as possible, you could, you could even not use, um, uh, the socket headers and just solder directly into the doubler feathering. That means you'd have a really low profile. Um, so maybe if you want that, there's just lots of different ways you can you can wire it up. Do we make a right angled 
uh, connections for those or headers for uh, for these guys? I don't I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I guess if you're yep. really wanting to have easy axles like that, you could right. uh, bend them yourself. Yep. So there's like a little rig or something that you could print. And uh, th this cable uh, could, with some more effort and more work, we could uh, integrate this into one of the straps. So um, if if uh, if folks want to inter you know make it more hidden, there's there's some options there. We didn't do that because it's outside of our kind of skill set, but I think that could totally work where folks would like integrate the wiring into the garment, into the elastic bands, and make it maybe more into a vest or some sort of backpack or something. But yeah, um, definitely for C folks uh, fashioning their own backplate, because this one's very specific to, I guess, this design. But um, with the, the servo mount itself, like it can be added to anything. So if you need your, your wings further spread apart, um, you can uh, fashion your own back plate. And, uh, I stuck with this design because it it's, uh, kind of prints in less amount of time and you can laser cut this as well. But uh, yeah, it's all 3D printed. All right. Cool, I think that's the things I wanted to cover. Let me take a quick look at uh, my project notes. Yeah, the next one I want to talk about is um, what happens when you have a completely different set of wings. And just watch where you step. Uh, so I purchased these, these wings from Amazon and they are made out of uh, foam, TPU foam. And they have a super awesome look to them. They're these dragon wings. So here's what it looks like. Um, to design a custom bracket for it. It's very similar to the wing, but it's, it's, it's thicker, right? So I have this kind of um, U-shape here that kind of cups over um, this piece of the wing. And then there's these giant um, holes here. I used a, a needle to thread this here ribbon, and then I just knotted it there. So uh, that's how it's secured. But you notice that this is attached to the servo arm and the servo arm has the, uh, well, the servo horn built into it. So I found that like, if it's, it's easier uh, to just rework this whole piece instead of like, because you don't have access to the screw head once your wing is installed. So you can't kind of take these apart unless you take this apart. Um, so that's why I have it set up this way. So if you want to fashion, uh, you, you can create your own wing holder that attaches to the servo arm just using those, those mounting holes here down here. And uh, that's, uh, that's how you can uh, attach a bigger set of wings, different sized wings. Um, and these are, uh, I forget how much they weigh, but they're light, they're, uh, they're lightweight. I haven't installed them because I figured the other wings work well because they're, they're more you know, doable, I think, because you can actually make them. These are just bought. But hey, if you bought your set of wings from somewhere else and you need to fashion them, um, there's another option for mounting a bigger set of wings. Yeah, and I just left these uh, these servo horns on there. Maybe for show and tell, I'll, I'll put them on. <laughs> but yeah, they're a little bit more weighed, so uh, you may or, or may not have uh, a bit of a, a jerk when it, when it's like flapping. But you just turn the speed down, and it and it won't uh, it won't fly away. Hopefully. There you go. So those are the bat wings. Lots of detail on them too. Really, really good set of wings. They're about thirty dollars on Amazon, but there's lots of different wings that you can purchase from Amazon. And uh, you want to make sure that the wings are are like that, separatable. Because I I did look at some wings, like some angel wings that have actual feathers, like built out of feathers. Yeah, it's like one. It's just like one wing, and it's like ooh, you have to do more work to separate them. So if you can find a set of wings that already have them separated, like I did, go with that. And uh, here's the 3D printed wing. Um, I also have a set of bat wings and, and things. Uh, it's in the other there's room. There's a couple, yeah. So there's a couple of different yeah, cat designs that you made designs. for these that you can try out yourself. I yeah. got a question on the servo. How long are the servos? I think you're asking for the dimensions of them. I can give you the price. Yeah, there's link a those. 3D model as well of the uh, of the servo that I'll release along with the with the learn guide, so that folks can uh, create a a very accurate model um, around the uh, 
uh, around the, the, the servo. And um, let's go ahead and take a look here. Just posted a link to the servo and it yeah. should have all of the dimensions and the text details on all There's the There's a text sheet, yeah. But if you just wait, you know, a little bit, I can I can toss you the model and then you can, uh, that, that has everything there. And it's like been tested because I 3D printed the parts. But yeah, it comes with a couple of different servo horns and a couple of different screws. It's already pre-wired and ready to go. Here it is side by side next to kind of your standard MG990S servo. It's a little bit taller. And the mounting holes are certainly different. Like I found that out, that the mounting holes are very specific to this model servo and uh, only the servo. But uh, yeah, cool. So I'm trying to post the uh, link to the Fusion file of the model, but of, but of course Fusion decided to crash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> it's gonna do that. Like I said, I, I have the files. I just we need to mm -hmm. get the learn guide published. So that'll happen at some point. It doesn't look like there's a uh, like a technical drawing. So uh, I did do a you know manual calipers measurement, but I have thoroughly tested it. It's pretty accurate. Um, you know what? I think I grabbed the data sheet from the company's website like plan tower or tower pro i think i went to, yeah i did a little bit of digging to find that but yeah oh you're you can, saying uh not how long how strong well it's in the link that i sent you so let me just paste strong. it in there <laughs> yeah i mean there's there's different ways so the stall torque i suppose is is one way to say it mm -hmm. And then there's also the orientation that you have this out. So if you have it laying down, it's going to be less. And if you have it vertical, so, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a tricky one. But cool. Yeah. Uh, another tip. Yeah, check out the, um, the website there, the manufacturer's website, Tower Pro. And they'll give you more of a data sheet, I think. Yep. And then, of course, you don't really know until you actually test it yeah, out Yeah, you're going to have to, yeah. We, uh... We had to just test it, yes. Cool. All right, um, let me revert back to my notes again. Let's see if I covered everything, because I almost missed the, the dragon wing thing. <laughs> yeah, so this is an expandable project, right? So if folks want to, uh, maybe you want to control your, your fairy wings with uh, Bluetooth. Well, you just pop it out. That's awesome. So now if I had a blue fruit feather, I could pop that in and then make sure that the code is updated uh, so that it, it has the libraries and, and code for it. But yeah, it's super easy to swap it out because all the wiring is done to the doubler and not the feather. So it, it is modular in that sense. There we go. And then around the Discord, we've got uh, Alvaro saying that uh, he's got a nice little backpack for his dog, Panda work nice for having a servo winged pooch that is amazing and we got some gifs in here posted by yanni of a corgi with his wings on it looks like he's flying as he jumps onto the couch <laughs> adorable that is super adorbs and if you're not on the discord go ahead and jump on that i have links to all of the parts all of the cad the fritzing the youtube video if you want to get a sneak peek at that and a bunch of the links straight from the guide. You want to get started on your own fairy wings? Or should I just say feather wings? Right. <laughs> I wish I could. Oh, there it goes. It's playing now. <laughs> wow. Right? It looks like they're flapping and all. That is super cool. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, cool. So no excuse not to have any wing powered costumes for uh, Halloween and going forward when cons get back. Yeah, I'd love to see action. folks in the cosplay community really make this theirs. Mm -hmm. um, so fashioning their own um, backpacks is just one piece of, I think, something bigger. Um, adding sensors to it so that it's uh, interactive, you know, driven with, mm -hmm. with uh, some sort of sensor input would be really cool as well. Awesome. Adding lights to the wings was That's another actually something amazing I to do. Thing. I mean, Lamar, uh, when I first saw it, I was just like, what? These look amazing. I mm -hmm. hadn't seen um, EL edge lit, you know, mm -hmm. on the edge of the wings. Yeah. Um, we, we've seen stuff from Disney and Tinkerbell and, and 
they're, they don't look as good as that, you know? Yeah. There's the always like one plate. or two LEDs and that's it. You know? Yeah, the back plate it's is actually a lot more bigger than this. I think it was like 30 bucks. Bulkier for, and heavier. And, yeah, nice bulky set of acrylic yeah, wings. So. They look cool, but they don't move. They don't have the yeah. light diffusion as even as you'd like them. And there's just a ton more that can be added to them. Yeah. So, so yeah, lots of room for improvements and stuff. And that's just two servos. We still have all of these channels to work with. So you want ears, you want a tail, or maybe you want six wings or something, <laughs> you know, or legs. Yeah. Cool. All right. That's, uh, I think that's a wrap for the project then. And then Deo20 is asking, are they able to flap? Yes, we have video of that. We'll post of the dragon yeah, yeah. wings that's being funny. driven by them. They do not flap. <laughs> no, they flap. Um, I'm actually surprised at how the force that they have. Um, yeah, you, uh, so they, you can pinch your fingers, it'll slap you in the face, that sort of thing. It mm -hmm. really shows how different your wings placement are, right? Yeah. Like, when you had the, the code that you started off with that, you can just see how much power it has when it moves it up and down with the dragon wings attached. Yep, and in the code you can adjust the speed um, and of course the rotation, so if you want more more flap or something, mm -hmm. there you go. I was just gonna swap out the, uh, the black wing here for the other one so they're not. I really do need to get some M3 wing nuts. Like I really do. That would make this so much easier. Um, so another tip I guess is to not uh, mishandle your servo a lot like I am. You could potentially strip. Uh, strip it. So I, I do have to kind of give you that, that caution. Um, I'm just doing this for the sake of just doing it, really. I know folks are... I have to sacrifice this... Uh... Um, there we go. Remember I said I made new holes, right? <laughs> just to show how fast this can be updated. There you go. All right. We won't even need the nuts, forget it. All right, here we go. F, E. Yeah, so now that it looks much more consistent with the two, two wings there. So by default, um, it'll rest in this position so that you can go through doors, right? You can go through a doorway. If your wings are super, super long, that's gonna be really important. But we made these wings to be a little bit shorter so that you can pass through a doorway even when they're open. Yeah. But yeah, the, uh, the pauses are randomized. There's a minimum and maximum value that you can adjust. So if you want them to stay closed longer or shorter, you just change the value. And if you don't want it to be random, well, you can do that as well. Look how it looks cool on the, on the LEDs there, Pedro. Nice, yeah, yeah so if you have some lights in there, yeah. have some really nice diffusion on that, which Aaron does have a project that has the iridescent film on some crystals. It gives it a really nice diffusion effect. So that'd be really cool on the wings. And we got uh, some links here to the backpack that he's gonna use on these. This is a really cool backpack for uh, dogs to carry things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would definitely fit on uh, fit on this, like on the top here. Really cool. Oh wow, yeah, that's <laughs> cool. It's like so, for hiking, right? So I got this wire dangling, but like I said, you can you can you can fashion the wire a little bit yeah, different. Yeah, and past pro uh, past three hangouts, we showed mm -hmm. the little um, handheld rocker switch uh, enclosure. Um, so you could definitely model something at, like that. It would fit into the potentiometer. So you can have like something that clips to the side. Yeah, I think folks that have their costume, they really need to fashion their own yeah, exactly, yeah. way to do it. So we really didn't like spend that much time on, on the switch. Um, it's really cool to see Erin, how she integrated into mm -hmm. her, into her yeah, uh, wrist. Steam it out thing. into your costume. Yeah, but these are just your basic um, elastic straps. Uh, we have a roll of them that we got from Ada Box. Mm. So if you got your Ada box and you got your costume goggles, uh, you yeah. can use the straps there. Yeah, I think the only other thing they would need would be the little end pieces to pinch the uh, where you cut the little ends of that to hold them in place. Yeah, I think uh, when it comes to size, you know, you're limited to 
your printer's bad or, or whatever. So don't feel like, oh, those are too small. You can make you them bigger. You can draw these out by hand on a piece of yeah. um, well, I think Aaron board. did a great job on like showing the scale, like putting two wings together to create more of a, of a, of a wing that has two layers to it. So. All right, cool. So you don't even that see them. Is, yeah, like, they just kind of pop out every <laughs> now and then. That's the cool effect of that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and again, the backpack can be remixed so that if you want to spread your wings out more, mm -hmm. you can uh, you can do that. You can you can attach them to anything. Yeah. So. All right, cool. I think that's going to do it for this whole episode since it's uh, five minutes till. Oh wow! That was the whole fairy that was the guide? Whole, the, oh wow! We'll have a completely packed show next week. Yeah. <laughs> and so there's a bunch of other I things so we're prototyping. There's sure. a bunch of oh, yeah. uh, more servo based projects, MIDI, Pico, yes. all that cool stuff coming up. Go Pull ahead fly. and <laughs> fly into <laughs> In later nice tonight. Stay tuned. There's yeah, a lot I'm more really shows excited, folks. coming up. I hope everybody's doing well. I really want to see you guys on uh, Wednesday, today, <laughs> later tonight on Ask an Engineer on Show and Tell. We're not hosting this week. Lamar yeah. and Phil are back. It was super fun hosting the other weeks, but uh, we hope to see you still there. We'll be on there. Maybe we'll show something else. Don't forget, though, tomorrow is John Park's workshop. It starts at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Check in with John, say what's up. And then on Fridays, we got Deep Dive with Scott. So be sure to check in with Scott on Fridays. Let's get on back over to... Uh, yeah, Over just a quick, quick note from Bruce to check out Walmart. They have the, um, just check in the sewing section. They have a lot of those parts he's saying for about 60% off. Oh, that's, that's great. Check that's a great out. tip, yeah. yeah. And what do we have on hand, right? What do we have on hand? Mm -hmm. You got some... Any equivalents will yeah. work, or should work. Yeah. All Spend right. some time looking at all the wings on Amazon, you know, and there you go, so which many. ones do I want? Uh -huh. I'm just not going to take these off now. <laughs> <laughs> just like Aaron said it. Well, this was super fun, folks. Um, hope to see you tonight. I'm running out of things to say. So. That's it. All right. We're going to say goodbye now. <laughs> We're going to leave you with uh, your moment of fail. This week's fail is brought to you by, what was this? I think it was like a base plate for a thermostat. I actually got a different one. Oh. This one hurts a little bit more. All right. Oh. Yeah. So here's the tip. When you are finished with your print, you don't want to take it off the bed like this. This is why the bed flexes. I know. So right there, <laughs> I split the part. Seven hours. You delaminated. I, I, I broke my part. Because I just thought it'd be cool to film it with one hand. Nope. You got to uh, uh, flex the plate. The filament isn't that bad. It's just that is not how to take your print <laughs> off the bed. <laughs> So learn from my mistakes, folks. <laughs> we'll see you tonight. Good luck. Bye. Have a great one, guys.